Breaking cancer news! If you or someone you know has hepatitis B, this episode is for you. And how, you might ask, does this relate to cancer? Or a cancer channel, after all. Well, because hepatitis B is the biggest driver of both liver cancer and cholangiocarcinoma, and there's a new treatment that is very exciting right on the horizon. So stick around, because at the end, I'm going to talk about both this drug and the bigger picture of how it may be able to help many different chronic viral infections. This is going to be a very important video to share far and wide to reach as many folks as possible. Why? Because someone you know may be living with hepatitis B, and you wouldn't even have a clue. So please, share, 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 share. Hello, and welcome to Elevating Cancer Treatment, where we explain the science and debunk myths to help you navigate your health journey. My background is a little different. Beyond educating about cancer, I'm actually designing new drugs that are defining the future of oncology. This direct, hands-on experience offers me a very different perspective of how these cancer treatments work on the body, interact with the cancer cells, and cause side effects. And these are insights that I'm excited to share with you. If that sounds interesting, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. And please share it if you find it useful. I'm Dr. Jay Chaplin. An important reminder, I'm a PhD, not an MD. The information in this video is education, and it's not medical advice. Every cancer is unique, and no general information applies to everyone. Please remember that. Always consult with your healthcare provider for guidance on your specific situation. And two quick things. First, as a thank you for being here, I've created a free resource, 10 Things to Elevate Your Chemo Journey, which you can download from the link below. And second, by signing up, you'll also get updates on that innovative cancer treatment I'm working on. I'm confident it represents a significant advancement in immunotherapy. So please take a moment, download your free guide, and join us in shaping the future of cancer treatment. Now, Again, you might be thinking, wait, elevating cancer treatment is a cancer channel. Why are we talking about a virus? What's the real impact? So here's why. The lifetime risk of, let's say you, getting liver cancer without hepatitis B or C infection is about 1% on average. For men, it's about 1 in 76, and for women, it's about 1 in 130. You average those out, it's just about exactly 1 in 100. If you've been rough on your liver, you add in cirrhosis or fatty liver disease, your risk rises to about 2, maybe 3% tops. That's already a big jump, going from 1% to 3%. And that's a 300% increase because of the absolute risk versus relative risk. We'll talk about that again. But hepatitis B is the real heavy lifter here. If you have a chronic hepatitis B infection, your lifetime chance of developing liver cancer jumps to 27%. That's the absolute risk. And you also have a very much elevated risk of cholangiocarcinoma. Now, 1% to 27%, I don't have enough fingers for that, that's a 2,700% increase, which is the relative risk. That's actually very similar to how much smoking increases lung cancer risk. And it explains something really important. Hepatitis B accounts for 56% of all liver cancer worldwide. So now you know why I'm talking about hepatitis B. It's a huge impact. So how big of an impact? Worldwide, an estimated 250 to 300 million people are living with chronic hepatitis B infection. Not just they got it, but they have it their whole life. And it can come from really unexpected places, like sharing toothbrushes or touching people who have small cuts, whether in your household or, or at work. So this idea that it only comes from IV drug use or sex work is absolutely false. There's a link down below with a ton of different ways that it's been transmitted. This means that about one in every 25 people alive today carries the virus long-term, and many of them aren't even aware of it. Did you know that Hep B was that common? Globally, chronic hepatitis B causes around 800,000 to 1.1 million deaths every single year, primarily from cirrhosis and from liver cancer. Now, hepatitis B is a brutal virus to get. Why? It integrates its DNA into your cells, it can shield itself, it can hide, and once it's in, it'll immunosuppress you to some extent, it'll cause a ton of inflammation. It's incredibly difficult to get rid of, especially if you're infected young. If an infant gets hepatitis B at birth from the mother who has hep B bleeding during childbirth, 90% of them will develop a chronic lifelong infection compared to just 5% of adults who get exposed. So if kids get hepatitis B, it often becomes chronic, lifelong, and historically, there's been virtually nothing you can do to eliminate it. You can suppress it, but you can't cure it. So while we do have a very good vaccine for preventing hepatitis B, 
I'm not going to go into that in this video. This video is about treatment, and the treatment currently for chronic hepatitis B is basically low-grade chemotherapy for the rest of your life. It's similar to drugs like gemcitabine or temozolomide. You take it every day for the rest of your life. That's rough. Even with a treatment like that, which is very disruptive, the cure rate is 1% or less. So virtually all people end up on lifelong maintenance therapy, which means, yes, it's just a pill, you don't have to worry about infusions, but you're also gonna be immunosuppressed from the drugs and feel ill all the time. And if you don't squash down the virus, your lifetime cancer risk stays at 27% instead of one. But if you do, then you're immunosuppressed and you're gonna get sick all the time. So are you one of those people on lifelong maintenance therapy or do you know someone who is? Please share your experience because there's not nearly enough awareness about this. And again, please share this information widely to everyone you know because folks might not tell you that they're hepatitis B positive. So what is the new drug? Okay, let's get to good stuff. This is the kind of stuff my geek brain loves. A recent press release from GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, announced their new drug that they've been testing. It's called Bepirovirsin, or Bepi for short, just completed two different phase three clinical trials, and they reported fantastic results, although they haven't released the actual cure rate numbers yet. That I'm not so fond of. That's incomplete reporting, but it's still very promising. And we'll talk about this again as soon as the full report comes out. I'll dive into the numbers once they're available. So what makes this drug different is the mechanism and the intent of treatment. They're calling it a functional cure. So these were large and well-designed trials with good diversity. The two combined phase three trials were spread across 29 countries with about 1,800 patients. As an aside, compare that with the immunity bio press releases and the Anctiva drug that I'm going to do a video on in a couple of days. One of those press releases was analyzing two patients in their latest release of study data, just two. Hopefully this demonstrates why I have issues with the way Anctiva is being developed. Not the drug itself, but the way it's being developed. And I'll say a lot more in the future, and I also have in this past video as well. So with Bepi, the goal was simple, but powerful. Combine this new drug with the standard hepatitis B treatment, treat for a defined period. This was not short, it was about two years, but then they stopped. They stopped everything. After stopping, does the virus stay suppressed or does it come roaring back? With the current drugs, long-term suppression of the virus after stopping all treatment happens less than 1% of the time. You might get super lucky, but it generally doesn't happen. In the earlier phase two trials with this new drug, they saw about a 10% long-term suppression, which is a very big increase. 10% over 1%, I'll take that any day. Now in phase three, GSK says they hit all of their endpoints with statistically significant results. I'm betting higher than 10% or else they wouldn't be saying it. Now, again, you might be wondering, how do you know that the virus will continue to stay suppressed? They haven't followed these people for life. They're still following them though. Normally, if you go off all treatment for hepatitis B, the virus comes back within weeks, two months or less. But for this trial, all treatment was stopped for at least 24 weeks, and the virus didn't come back at all during that time. We still want to see the exact numbers, but this is a really, really big deal. Now, before we jump into what this means for patients with Hep B, if you like this kind of data-driven breakdown and following current developments, please subscribe to our channel so we can keep you up to date with all of the current cancer treatment science and news. Also, if you're needing support through your cancer treatment, your particular health journey, I help folks one-on-one -on -one to have their treatment be as successful as possible. Because everyone's cancer is unique, it should be guided uniquely as well. Cookie cutter approaches don't work as well. You can use the QR code on your screen or the link down below in the description. Please, reach out sooner than later. So, what does this mean for patients? Now, for people living with hepatitis B, this would be a complete game changer, and I'm Sure, you're eager to hear about when it's going to be released and available to the public. Drum roll, please. GSK is preparing to apply for approval within the next couple of months before the end of Q1, so before the end of March 2026. The idea is you take this course of treatment, you stop, you don't need lifelong therapy, and you remove that massive cancer risk along with the immunosuppression from current treatments. And here's something important. That excess risk of liver cancer, it continues even after someone already had liver cancer. Let me repeat that. 
That excess risk, the 2,700% higher risk of liver cancer, continues even after you or someone you love already has liver cancer. So if you have hepatitis B and liver cancer and think, well, this doesn't apply to me anymore, it absolutely does. This will reduce your risk of recurrence. Getting rid of hepatitis B reduces recurrence risk, it improves liver function, and it makes treatment far easier overall. So this matters for anyone who is dealing with chronic hepatitis B. Now, let's talk about why this drug is so interesting. My scientist brain's favorite part, because I can't get enough of this stuff. This is a completely different approach than anything that's been used before for hep B. This is a small snippet of RNA called an antisense oligonucleotide. When you're dosed with it, it enters the cells, it goes throughout your body, gets into all of your cells, and inside of the cell, if the virus is there, it binds to the virus's single-stranded RNA, the RNA that hepatitis B uses to make copies of itself, to make viral proteins, to drive inflammation and immune suppression. Those are the instructions for what the virus does, and when you bind this oligonucleotide to it, it's perfectly matched, but backwards, it sticks there, the viral RNA can't be read anymore, and so that whole process shuts down, and the cell recognizes something is really wrong, chops the whole thing up, and destroys it. That shuts down the viral life cycle. The virus can't make copies of itself anymore. Voila, the virus can't replicate, it can't spread to nearby tissue. It gets stopped at the source. This is not like taking something that messes up DNA or RNA replication and hoping those errors make the virus go away and damaging the body in the process. This is virus specific. And what makes this even more exciting is the much bigger picture. Now, personally, I love thinking about how to use technologies in ways other than what they were originally built for. Whenever I'm designing a new drug treatment or a vaccine, I like to think about how I can reuse already proven approaches to do something new. And that's why I love designing and using platform technologies like this one that can be used with many, many diseases instead of just one. This technique can work on any virus with an RNA step in its life cycle, and that's virtually all viruses. Almost all viruses go through a single-stranded RNA step at some point in their process of making copies of themselves. This means that this approach could extend far beyond hepatitis B. Just one example, HPV, human papillomavirus, which also causes multiple cancers. This kind of technology could be huge for that as well. And HIV and CMV, cytomegalovirus, there are a bunch more. Long term, we could see an entire class of drugs built this way for chronic viral infections. So I hope now you can see why I am so excited about this. This is my excited face. This is breaking news, and it has serious potential to be a real game changer, not just for millions of people across the globe, not just for hepatitis B, but beyond liver cancer, beyond cholangiocarcinoma, for any persistent, any chronic viral infection. This is the first time we're seeing something that might actually allow you to treat, stop, and move on with your lives when you have a chronic viral infection. This is really promising. It's very exciting, at least for me, and it could change cancer prevention forever. If you found this helpful, please, 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 please share it with everyone you know, because, again, they might be living with Hep B, and you wouldn't even have a clue. It doesn't hurt to share it with folks with other chronic viruses as well, because it would be really nice to have some hope. Thank you for helping us spread this evidence-based information, and please subscribe, because we will be doing another update as soon as we get all the full numbers on the cure rate. We'll be diving into the actual press release once the data is there and deconstructing that. We also share about other breaking cancer news and explain current drugs and proven off-label approaches. So stay tuned because this story is just getting started. Beyond these videos, if you need more personalized guidance or a deeper dive into specific treatments to have your treatment be as effective as possible, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions and medical advocacy. You can find information on our website, which is linked down below. Again, if you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, click the notification bell, and subscribe to our channel for more science-based cancer insights.